up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Um, yes, or a few days ago I made a video on house hacking and my thoughts on it. Um, so if you haven't seen that video, I would suggest going back to watch that because this is going to be the second part to that. Um, so the first, uh, the first video we just went over like essentially what is house hacking. Um, kind of went over some improvements uh, that you can do to build equity and just also, I guess, raise the value of the home overall. Um, so that was the first video, so I'm not really going to touch on any of that today. Today I want to take some time and go over exactly how to get into the house um, to house hack. Um, so the first, to be able to house hack, you have to have a home that you own. Um, whether that is a duplex, a single family home, an RV, a triplex, a fourplex, um, pretty much any type of living situation that you buy uh, that's not a rental. Um, so um, now that we got that covered, the first thing you're going to want to do is just buy the home, buy whatever you're going to buy. Um, second. The next thing you're going to want to do is find someone that you're friends with or someone online. Most times it's going to be someone that you're friends with. Um, so like for me, I'm not house hacking my current house, but if I were, I would have just brought the people I was living with before, which one of them already was someone that I've been living with for the past two years in the apartment uh, that we rented. And then prior to that, I mean, after that, we rented a house. Um, and so then the house that I bought is what we're living in. Um, so I already went over all, all the situation, how I'm not really exactly able to house hack that, uh, this house I'm living in now. Um, so go back and watch the other video if you want some clarification on that. Um, so first thing, you're going to buy the house. Second thing, you're going to find someone that you want to live with. Um, if it's in a, I would, the best way to house hack for me at least would be a duplex, just so that you're not living in a space and sharing space with someone that you don't know. So if you already have a buddy um, on one side of the duplex, you and your buddy can live here. On this side, you can just find some random person on Craigslist or Zillow or Redfin or any of that. Um, so I would suggest if you have a duplex, find someone um, for the other side that you don't know um, because that's just going to make it way easier. If you're living, if you're trying to house hack a single family home that's like say three bedrooms, then I would def definitely suggest finding someone that you are friends with or that you already know. Um, so you're not sharing a space with someone that you don't know and it's, like you don't create some awkward like, I don't know, you know what I mean, like just don't, it's going to be awkward with someone that you don't know and it's like the first time you meet them is them coming to sign a lease or something. Um, so that's what I have for that. Uh, the third thing is um leasing so the friend that i have now we're not i didn't make any type of like document or any type of contract where we're leasing or he's leasing a room for me or he's paying he is paying me rent but it's not in, a, in any type of contract or anything like that so if you want to be more official um i would say definitely make some type of agreement between you two stating that he's going to live there for a certain amount of time um he's going to pay you this amount of money um and this is where the money's going to um you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but it's definitely going to make it a little bit easier to keep track of where the money's going so you're not taking money or getting money from him and then you're spending it on other stuff, you know? Um, so definitely uh, make some type of contract if you want. Um, and tied into that also is the money. Make sure you keep track of what he's paying you, he or she is paying you, um, for utilities, Wi-Fi, um, you know, like energy uh, and just the rent. Um, so you want to make sure that you're keeping track of all that just to be sure that you're not spending that money somewhere else and then when time comes to pay the rent or pay those bills, you don't have it. Um, so I definitely suggest don't ask for the money in advance. Don't try to get the money like two weeks ahead of time unless you want to and you're good at keeping track of your money. But for most people, it, would just, it just makes sense the day that the bills do, ask for the money. Um, if we're using Venmo or, um, well, I guess you, the payment, so this is the next thing is payment. So you can either have them pay you through Venmo, you can have them pay you through Cash App. Um, I wouldn't really recommend those two just because if you don't ask for the money in advance, like a few days before, then those apps are going to take a fee, which is probably like 1% or something of what uh, the money that you're receiving. 
So unless you want to pay those fees every single month, um, I wouldn't suggest using those. I would just have him write you a check or um, just receive cash from them. That's going to be the easiest way and then just take the cash, deposit in your bank and then immediately when you get home pay the bills so you're not worrying about, oh I got these other bills coming up and blah blah blah. So just make sure you do that. Um, and the way that I have it set up with my roommate is he's strictly just paying me for rent and utilities in the Wi-Fi. Um, so as a homeowner, you're going to have to set aside some money for taxes. Uh, so I would suggest that when you close on a home with your realtor, make sure that you know how much the taxes are in your area for your home. Um, so right off the bat, you can start saving money. Like if you have an envelope in your home, um, in your dresser, or you have like some shoe box that you can start putting money into with uh, separate envelopes. I would literally just write what this for. So make one envelope for taxes and then one envelope for your rent and your portion of the utilities. And then just every time you get a paycheck, just divide the money out of that automatically. So you're not like, at least for me, um, like if I get paid a thousand dollars and my rent if I get paid a thousand dollars every single week and my rent is a thousand dollars a month, my portion of the rent would be five hundred dollars. So instead of me paying five hundred dollars out of my account every single month, just up front, I normally just divide it by the week. So um, I would divide like five hundred divided by how many weeks are in the month, and then whatever that comes out to is what I'm going to save every single week in that envelope for my rent, um, for my utilities, and for taxes. Uh, just to keep, just to stay on top of it, it helps me budget my money better it, instead of just having the money that I get from a paycheck for my job go into my bank account and then every single month it just automatically comes out. It's easier to keep track of your money separately, um, at least if that works for you, it does for me. Um, keep track of it separately so you're not just like looking at your account and you're like, oh, I have $5,000, but then in like three days it's going to be missing like $1,300 or something. Um, so I just keep track of that because my savings account is my savings account. That's what I use for savings and I shouldn't be spending any money out of my savings account. My checking is for what I use for groceries, gas, um, leisure, like going out to eat, um, maybe going uh, go-kart racing or something with some friends, stuff like that. So it is, it's just better to keep track of your money um, so you know exactly where every single penny is going that you receive from your, from your job. Um, so that's something to, to consider. And then um, I would say just after, since we have all that covered, just like with receiving payment and stuff, I would say that like getting a house is really not that difficult, but you have to be able to have a good realtor that's gonna be able to, um, that's gonna be able to like guide you through everything. So if you're a new buyer, I would suggest trying to find a first time home buyer's agent or someone that specifically knows um, how to work with first time home buyers so that you can get all the bases covered and if you need to get into some type of program for assistance, they know what to do and they know who to call. Um, so you're not just out left hanging, like stressing about all this money and stuff. Um, so that's also, a, that's a definitely a good thing to keep in mind. Um, and on top of that, getting the house is not gonna be something that, I, get, I mean it is exciting, but like why you're doing it is gonna be kind of stressful just because you're gonna have to pay for like inspections, you're going to have to pay uh, for the appraisal, I believe, um, and just things like that. So there's just certain things that you're going to have to pay for outside of the closing costs and the down payment um, before you even like go to closing. Those They're, they're going to request that money before like the day of, um, and they're pretty strict on, you know, like late payments and stuff. You're gonna, probably going to incur some type of fee. So I would say stay on top of that. And if you don't know all about that, make sure you ask your realtor, like let them know, hey, I'm a first time home buyer and I need help with this. Um, can you guide me through it? Something like that. And it's not gonna be, it shouldn't be a big ordeal for them to be able to guide you through what you're doing because they're your realtor and you're gonna be paying them and the, or they're, the, the seller's gonna be paying them in the end. Um, but essentially they could still ask for a fee from you. Um, so that, that's really like what I have is just like buying a home or buying a duplex or a triplex it is really not that difficult, but it definitely takes a little bit of time, um, especially with the way the markets are now, just, you know, making sure you find the right place for you. And you also want to make sure, like for me at least, it was kind of difficult because we were, when, if you're from Indiana, I was living in Hamilton County, like up north, I was living in Noblesville. 
So when I was looking for houses over towards like Fountain Square and like uh, Meridian Kessler and stuff like that and like where we settle now in Butler Tarkington, um, I definitely had to run past like every single deal that, or property that I was going to look at. I had to run it past my, my, my potential roommate um, to make sure that he was okay because the last thing you want is you, like if you're not involving who your roommate's going to be, if you already know. If you're not involving them, like you don't, they don't have to be involved in all the negotiations and all that. But if you're not like letting them know, hey, I'm gonna go look at a house downtown, then it could turn back on you because if you go ahead and you make an offer and the offer gets accepted, and then say that your roommate, you guys are living in Fishers, and your roommate works in like Carmel, well, maybe he doesn't want to drive 45 minutes to work every single day. So just be aware that whoever you're living with is definitely like, or I mean, where you buy a house at. Is definitely going to impact your roommate's life so he's going to be living there and he's going to have to drive to work and also for you you want to make sure that you're not setting like your bat or your boundaries too too wide so that you're not driving like an hour to work every day and just because you can't find something in your area does not mean that you can't extend it out just a little bit like for me i was mainly looking in hamilton county because that's where i've lived out my whole life but i definitely wanted to look in houses in like fountain square um over on the east side, like just all different areas just because I've never lived in those areas and I, just for me it'd be something new, um, which I really was excited for. So that's why I chose the house that I did. Um, and also the pricing. The pricing fluctuates from area to area. Like Hamilton County is going to be way, hold on, no. Okay, sorry. Um, Hamilton County is going to be a little bit more expensive in terms of taxes and home price for most of them unless you're going to be in like an older area. Um, so I'll just say keep an eye out on that for what you can actually afford because for me, um, even though I got appraised for a certain amount, like when I was looking at townhouses and um, like condos and stuff, all those townhouses and condos, they all have like association fees which is going to essentially lower the amount of what you can actually afford just because the way that the lender works is they're going to run all your like financials um and they're going to like pretty much make sure that you can actually afford the home that you're buying so if you're buying a condo or uh, a townhouse that has like a 300 dollars a month um association fee they're going to factor that into what you can afford so the actual price of the home might lower just a tad bit um just because they have to factor in that fee so like you're not paying if you can afford $700 a month plus a 300, they're gonna make sure that you can actually afford that amount. Um, so that's just something to also think about uh, in terms of that. Um, and definitely older homes too, from what I've noticed, I, even though the house I bought was remodeled, there's definitely issues with it just because it's older. Like my house is almost 100, or is 101 years old, um, which is a pretty old, so there's definitely going to be some small issues that you're going to have to budget for just ahead of time. Um, so just be aware of that so you're not like spreading yourself too thin and you're not spending all of your money on a down payment and closing costs. Like, I would just suggest that if you're actually serious about buying a house and you want to house hack it or you just want to buy a house and start building equity, um, I would say like make sure you have a budget for what you know like what you know that you can afford. So if you're gonna if you have thirty thousand dollars in your savings account, um, if you have thirty thousand dollars in your savings account and the down payment and closing costs and everything all in is gonna be like twenty five thousand dollars, that leaves you with five thousand dollars. And five thousand dollars might not seem like a whole bunch, but in terms of a house, oh my god. Sorry guys, uh, I had to take a call. I, I forgot. I completely forgot I had a meeting set up for today, um, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but what I was talking about with the before with the twenty five or the thirty thousand dollars minus the twenty five thousand dollars for the all in cost, that leaves you with five thousand. Um, I would say five thousand dollars to some people might seem like a small amount, but in terms of doing like work to the home, that's definitely enough money to to get started doing some some small things to improve the home. Um, but also on top of that, you don't want to be spending all of your money dumping it into like the house. Essentially, you're gonna to want to have the money set aside. So if you lose your job, you still have money to pay the mortgage. If you lose your job, you still want to have money to be able to afford groceries. So like you, just just be aware of how much money you actually have. And before like you need to take some time to actually think about this in depth. That like buying a house is right for you because right now, 
Um, I don't know why, but for some reason it seems to me that like the app, most people don't buy their first home until they're like in their 30s or something. Um, so like for me, when I bought my house at 23, a lot of my friends are starting to say like, oh, I want to buy a house, I want to buy a house, I want to buy a house. But like at the same time, like just because I bought a house, like I've been trying to buy a house and I've been interested in this in real estate for like pretty much my whole life. So this is something that is part of my goal that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. So just because I'm doing it, just because someone in your family is doing it, does not mean that you have to do it. Like you have to make sure that it's actually right for you, um, and that you actually can afford the home, and that you know what you're getting yourself into. Because if you can't pay the mortgage payment, that's not a good thing. So you definitely want to make sure you have the funds, and you have the money, and you have income to be able to afford this. Um, so that's just really the last thing I want to say. Uh, this is part two of the um, house hacking journey. Um, I'm going to be coming out with a video like specifically of how to get into a house. Um, I just thought about that with more things on like I guess exactly how to do it um, and things like that. So definitely stay tuned for that. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Um, if this helped you, turn on the notification bell so you can stay updated on when I release new videos. Um, also I've been making some more shorts, um, YouTube shorts, just because they're a little bit they're, for me at least, like my, my audience retention has been going down a little bit because I'm making longer videos, but I have a lot of information to give you guys. Um, so if you don't have time to watch the full video, please like the video or save the video so you can go back and watch the full video because I, I am providing a lot of information for you guys and I don't want you guys to miss out um, on certain things. And also, if there's something in the video that you don't want to hear or you've already heard it or you already know it, then skip through it to something that you haven't heard and you don't know. Um, so that's just all I got to say. Hope you guys have a good weekend. Um, I might be making, on, on the gaming side of the YouTube channel, I might be doing um, a few more races this weekend. We have an F1 um, uh, Russian Grand Prix coming up on Sunday, so I'm excited for that. Um, so yeah, go ahead, like and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate you guys coming back. Um, and yeah, enjoy the rest of your day.